Hey everybody, in this video we're going to show you how to add a menu bar, which is one of these here. Menu items, or sorry, menus, which are these. And then the menu items, which are just the things underneath. And we'll show you the checkbox ones too, after we do the regular ones, like this, where you click and something happens. Now for the most part, these here are just like regular buttons. Um, these ones here, slightly different, but almost like regular buttons. So here we go. I'm just going to start with a new frame here that's just empty. Let's go to design view. And what you want to do is in your swing controls, you just want to scroll down a little bit here and look for swing and you want to look for the menu bar. You want to click, drag the menu bar, drop it. You're going to see you have two menus already, the file menu and the edit. If you want, you can delete those. So you can uh, select one and just hit delete on the keyboard. Um, I'll leave the edit one there for a sec. But here's how you add some more menus. You just grab a menu, drag it up there, click, drag a menu, click. I think you get the idea. So those are the menus. Now the menus are empty when you start. So then you add your menu items. So let's drag a menu item into this one and another menu item into this one. I'll just add a third one there. You get the idea. <coughs> now what you want to do is you want to name stuff properly. So for instance, I can click on this, I can edit the text, and maybe that's my options menu. You may also want to name it, so change variable name, menu options, this one here. Let's do a little edit text, and maybe this was a level change. I'm not going to worry about the spelling here. Change variable name, menu level change, that time I got it right. This one here, right? Edit text, other stuff, change the name, menu, other stuff. You get the idea. When you actually go to run this here, let's give it a quick run. Whoops, wrong one. Let's do this one here. Quick run. You'll notice your menus are up here and your menu items fall underneath. And when you click them, nothing's happening right now. So we just have to add the click code. It's just like a button. All you have to do is, let's do uh, the level change here. Okay, it's sort of bothering me that it's not quite right. Let's just double click it. And when you double click it, you'll see it takes me to menu level change and you put your code in just like you would code a regular button. And so you can do whatever you want here, right? Your code, nothing really special there if you know how to code buttons. And that's really it for your regular menu items. Uh, menu bars and menus and menu items are nice they obviously save space and you can put a lot of stuff where usually you would have buttons now you can have this stuff there um, the other one I wanted to show you was a checkbox item just how that one works so I'll just do this one in the edit menu here instead of a menu item I'll add a menu item checkbox so I'll just click drag and I'll put that in the edit bar okay and I'll just give it a little name here I'll edit text and uh, I'll say turn let's put something like this um i am checked and let's rename it menu checked and here's basically how you access it when you double click this as if the user had clicked it double click it takes us to the code for it now, if you want to know what it's just been changed to, like has the user just ticked it or has the user just unticked it, all you have to do is check the state of this menu item. And you do it like this. If menu checked, dot, and there's a method here called get state. And get state basically returns true if it's ticked and it returns false if it's not ticked. So I can just say, if it's true, I'm going to do something. Um, for now, I'll just do a little printout down below. I am now checked. And else, system out, print line, I am not checked. And this is sort of how you keep track, right? Whether it's checked or not. So you just use the get state. Just to see this working, let's give it a quick run. And I'll go edit. So right now it's checked. I'm going to click it. It's going to uncheck it. And you can see here now it knows I am not checked. Okay, and if I go back and I check it again, now I check it, I am now checked. So that's how you check what the user's done with it, right? And it's just always there. So those are sort of nice to use once in a while. You'll see in the original program that I had made, 
I'll just run this one. You'll see I have spell check on or off. Let's say I turn it off. I turn spell check on. It prints out false. I can do spell check on. Uh, if you want to remember what the user's done, a nice way to do it is just what I've done here. I've made a variable called spell check. I've set to zero. Zero for me means this is not on. Okay, it's off. And you'll see down here when they do click on menu spell check, I check the state. If it's true, I know that they've just ticked it and I now record that so I can remember a little bit easier. Spell check equals one. Otherwise, they must have turned it off. I'll set my spell check variable back to zero. Now, true, you could just constantly check the state of that item if you wanted, but uh, there's a lot of times where it's just nicer to tidy it up inside a variable so you don't always have to be checking the state. Um, that's really it for these menu items. Like I said, all you have to do is drag the menu bar, add the menu, and put the items inside each menu. And off you go. Uh, hopefully that helps and you have fun with that one. Thanks for watching.